Hey, it's Grappy Peeps. Susanna here today for Crafting at a Distance. This is Sarah's challenge, and it's called Just the Essentials, and this is the layout that I created using the essential things that Sarah had listed on her list. So she has a list of things that you are allowed to create with. This is the challenge, and that is all you are allowed to use. So you can have a one white piece of cardstock, your paper trimmer, a tape runner, scrap pieces of pattern paper so you can see the pattern paper that I have there one set of alphas which I will pull out at the end because I wasn't sure one color ink and applicator one date stamp I said tape runner two packs of already opened embellishments and your scissors uh, scissors just so that you know was originally not on the list and Christina and I were like, no scissors. And she was like, nope, no scissors. And we were like, okay. And then she added scissors. So thank goodness she added scissors because if you've only got one pack of embellishments, this fussy cutting like I'm doing here of these houses, critical, absolutely critical. So I have pulled pieces of scrap paper. Um, so see that piece of paper with the cherries on it? That is from, I cannot remember who that's from, but I have a whole pack of that from Tuesday morning. Um, and so that was what I pulled my color palette based on. And so I went with dark blue, navy, red, pink, and white embellishments. Um, and so for that, I chose um, some puffy stickers from Crate Paper using All My Heart or All Heart. And then that I had opened, I had just used the two um, uh, record players and there was a lot of pink um, and some navy in that. And then I also went with Heidi Swap's Ephemera Pack from her Emerson Lane collection. So I'm going through these embellishments from the Emerson Lane collection and I'm pulling out the things that have the pink in them, um, the navy slash black, and um, just kind of deciding, auditioning them and deciding what's going to work with um, the, the color palette that I have chosen. So a little bit about um, these photos. This is a coronavirus layout um, or related to our self-quarantine. Um, this is our cat, Belle, and um, we joke about her being like the princess in the pea. She loves to lay on these blankets that we have for the kids. Um, and it just so happened that we had had two of them folded and stacked on top of each other. And she is uh, laying on those. Since we have all been home, um, she's at a bit of a loss as to why we are all home. Normally it's just her and I in the afternoons and she gets the mornings to herself uh, or herself. There's only one of her. Um, and so this is layout is just about her cat nap and how we are all adapting to our new normal, including the cat. Uh, those three by four cards that you saw just now in a creative bubble, uh, Geraldine has those for free download. I will link you in the box down below. That was not called for in um, Sarah's list, but I'm considering them scrap. Uh, because I had already used one of them and those were the leftovers that I had had from uh, Geraldine's free download. And I wanted to use those because um, a lot of the scrapping that I've been doing lately is about the coronavirus. So of this scrap that I'm going to use to frame the, that large photo, I want to cut out the middle um, because I'm thinking I'm going to fussy cut some of these cherries and also use them as embellishments on my layout here. So there's my one tape runner, no liquid adhesive, just tape runner. And I'm going to center that in that center the photo in that rectangle there and then I have this ripped piece um, I had already ripped it for something else that I used uh, and so I'm just going to use a small border of that um, the idea is to create some balance between the left hand side of the page where the photo is going to go with the white space on the right hand side there I have that triangular piece left over from a scrapping error of something that I did from Ellie's studio um, and and I thought that I might inc incorporate that in order to get that uh, orangey red from the cherries incorporated into the right hand side of the layout but I am actually going to end up scrapping that. This is a piece of houndstooth um, pink 
houndstooth sort of salmon uh, that I'm going to put there. I like the way that it really pops the red in the cherries. Um, I've pulled a whole bunch of patterned paper here and I really want to incorporate that somewhat softer pink so that when I use the pink in the embellishments you can kind of it, it ties it all together. There is also that softer pink in the cherry stems um, and so this way I'm able to incorporate all of the colors into that left hand side of the layout and you can see I'm just going to use a super thin border there and that creates um, the bulk of what's going to go on the left hand side there. So I will tell you that off camera that black and white striped strip that's torn on the right hand side of the photo I am going to lower that I'm going to move it down um, ha having a little bit of a different perspective on the layout I've got that strip and then a strip that I'm going to use on the right hand side and they're sitting level with each other um, but I like when I lowered it how it creates a, a better visual balance on the layout there. So I have this other photo. I actually had three photos. I had this large photo of the cat and then I had two closer ups of her. And I'm going to put that smaller photo into um, that frame there and put that on the right hand side of the layout and that's going to create the balance. So in this layout, the visual triangle is going to be the cat her head or the, the sort of the focal point of the, that large photo over to her in the frame down to this uh, cluster that I'm working on here. So you can see I fussy cut a number of the buildings and I did them in the various shades of pink um, and then I'm going to figure out that cluster a little better. I've got the tag in there currently, uh, which I don't end up using, but I do like that tag. The cool thing about these embellishments is that they um, can also be run through the mink. Um, you can leave them as they are or run them through the mink and add a foil effect. Um, foil was not on my list of essentials, so I did not get that option, but I'm excited to give that a try. So, um, this is where I decide that I do want to use this color and I need to pull a little bit of that red or that darker pop of color, brighter pop of color over onto the right hand side. So I've just ripped a matching strip to that blue strip there and I like how that brings that color over to that right hand side. So I'm just going to fix. Um, what bothers me about this is that the cat is her head is looking off the page and in the ideal world, um, I would have a photo that looked into the center of the page just as the opposite photo is, um, but I, I couldn't really flip the photo because that was not the reality of it. There's no writing on it and so I guess in theory I could have, but this is the real photo and that's why I went with that. So um, I, I am going to use my date stamp that I am allowed to use in my one ink color, but I will do that off camera. I'm just going to use a one canoe two date stamp um, and just stamp March 17th in that little date spot right there because that is um, the date of this photo. I have recently been scrapping a lot of current photos. Um, you know, literally things change on a daily basis with this whole coronavirus business coronavirus business um, and so I've been trying to get sort of the highlights of those changes um, scrapped as we go. It's kind of like my traveler's journal. In fact, I've toyed with the idea of um, starting a traveler's journal and using it as a daily journal and just um, scrapping an event simply daily in my traveler's notebook. But um, I've really enjoyed working in this 12 by 12 size uh, and so I think I'm going to stick with that. But um, We'll see as time goes, because who knows how long this is going to last and how many traveler's notebooks I might need to go through. So I've decided I'm going to use that coronavirus card there on the left hand side. Um, originally, you'll see that I stick it down and it ends up being cut off off of the edge. I really don't like that. It ruins the symmetry of the card. And so again, off camera, I'm going to pull that out and I'm going to trim it so that the card actually is no longer three by four. It's just a very little bit um, to even it out, but that uh, there was something about the way that it was cut that just ruined the symmetry next to the white border of that photo. So you can see I'm using that frame upside down, but I'm going to cover up notes and I've done that intentionally. Uh, I don't want journaling to go there. Um, it's actually just a place to house um, 
family time, although there's no picture of the family. It's just her being stuck at home with the family. Um, I'm going to fussy cut my own heart because I'm not allowed to use a punch and I'm only allowed to use scrap paper and I want a red heart. So um, I'm allowed to use my scissors and there is a great use of my scissors there. Um, I am going to, I had thought that I would outline the heart um, and so I was testing the different pens there and uh, decided against that and that was also a violation of the rules because pens are not on the list but obviously you need to use a pen for journaling um, so I will just save my pen for journaling. Uh, let's see what else. So I am indecisive as to where this flower is going to go. I do really like it at the bottom but I also really liked it at the top um, and it ended up being a good thing that I stuck it up the top because my title is going to go um, in that white space underneath that right hand side photo there. I would fussy cut this extra house and I like the way that putting the house on the right hand side ties the right hand side of the layout to the left hand side of the layout. Um, so something to consider if you don't have a trio in that visual triangle of embellishments that if you have a divided look like I've got here. Um, it is useful to put embellishments on both sides in order to create that unity and move your eye across the page there. So you see that I have, um, I will put actually cherries, I will fussy cut cherries and I will put that on both sides of the layout. I've got houses on both sides of the layout um, and then I've got those two three by four cards that are also like objects that will um, move your eye across that page there. I really wanted to incorporate uh, that ticket, that blue ticket there, but I had to find a way of making it work with the angles of the photo and the three by four card that I have in there. And you can see I struggled with that a little bit. I am gonna find a solution um, by using the fussy cut cherries. It breaks up that linearness of those angles, um, softens it and makes that work a little bit better. So after much to do, I have finally found a home for that house. Uh, I like the symbolism of the house and um, all of us being at home and working with that uh, right now at home in that three by four card there. So you can see that empty space in the card there. I am going to leave it. I had left it with the intent that perhaps I might journal in there, um, but I really like the white space in that where above the buildings, it matches the white space on the right hand side of the layout and kind of gives your eye a place to rest in the busyness of all of what I've actually done there. So you can see that even though I was limited to only two open packs of embellishments, um, I had rather full embellishment packs and then by fussy cutting these cherries and the the houses I was able to get a lot of embellishments um, and probably actually use more embellishments than I would typically use on a layout so don't forget this is part of our crafting at a distance challenge um, we have three challenges posted I am going to post I'm giving you a sneak peek here a fourth challenge uh, hopefully this weekend that's coming up it's a uh, just something that we're going to tack on at the end. I hope you've enjoyed these challenges and they've kept you busy during this self-quarantine time. Um, and if you complete the challenges, you can use the hashtag crafting at a distance, literally all of those words strung together. Or um, we have folders over on the Rediscover Your Stash Facebook page um, and you can post them to the appropriate folder there. And we also have prizes. So this is the one set of alphas that I'm using. I believe this goes with... Uh, Chamel's one of Chamel's collections I may be wrong about that uh, these are I picked up at Tuesday morning and that is where the title is going to go the close-ups are to follow thanks for stopping in today I hope you're surviving and uh, making the most of all of this potential crafting time enjoy the challenges thanks for stopping in today I hope you're doing well take care <music>